let's go over some interesting hardware stuff. So we've talked about microcontrollers that can be used for uh, all sorts of interesting cybersecurity stuff and also maker stuff on the show a lot. And we've got another one. Uh, so mm -hmm. the ESP32 S3 is the one that I meant to be on, which you can also check out on ESP32S3.com is a really interesting, oh, this relies on JavaScript. Uh, is a really interesting microcontroller uh, that is kind of the new flagship of Espressif. And a lot of these that have been coming out that we've been using, like the S2, just lack a little bit of something. Like, for example, the uh, the S2 is a really interesting board, but it doesn't have some of the features uh, that the ESP32 S3 has. So um, in, in particular, uh, it doesn't have Bluetooth. And that is something that is a really cool peripheral to have if you want to be able to link to something like, I don't know, a speaker or a control system or, or an app on your phone to control this thing while it's doing Wi-Fi stuff and it's doing maybe human interface device stuff. It just adds like a lot that you can do on this. And I was actually hoping for a comparison versus, versus the S2. But um, another thing is, and I know that you, uh, I think, all right, so the S2 is supposed to have like a single core plus like a helper core or something. And I know that you've worked with it before and insisted it was dual core. So I'm not going to challenge you on that. Um, but this one is truly dual core and it's a lot faster. Uh, and it has some additional like low power processors that are, are like little like helper processors that you can also use for stuff. Um, and most importantly, uh, I believe I addressed this here. It has things oh. like AI uh, built into it, machine learning models built into it, including a cat face detection system. I'm not making this up. So this- That's a feature that everything needs to have on it. Exactly. So this actually innately will allow you to program in applications that uh, do cat face detection. I'm not making that up. That was a primary <laughs> focus of the developers was to include this model. Um, and of course, they have other stuff like human face recognition, human face detection, color detection, and hand pose recognition. But who wants any of that stuff? Really, it's all about the cat face detection. Um, and it is important to kind of draw the line here. If you think that means it's going to recognize and let your cat in versus other cats, that is not, it's not what this means. It, do, it means that it can detect a cat's face, not that it can distinguish between cats. That would be cat face recognition. So don't get don't get too wildly excited. I do want to put this in perspective, but I was amazed to see that this brand new microcontroller does in fact uh, support <laughs> cat face recognition right out of the uh, the box essentially. So it can just tell cat or not cat, but it can yeah, exactly. distinguish between it, it, cats. So right. you could make something that lets your cat in, but not a raccoon uh, to, okay. to go get some food. However, if your cat brought in its friend cats, then it wouldn't be able to tell the difference. That's kind of the, the ability there. So anyway, so this is, uh, I ended up picking one of these up and we just got, I think it was the Tiny S3. Um, and this Didn't is- Didn't we get both actually? Uh, or... So I got a design by Adafruit. So it's uh, not this okay. one, exactly. This one is actually sweet, but the lead time on it was crazy because it comes from Australia. And these are by Unexpected Maker. I honestly had heard of their boards before, but I hadn't really tried any of them out. And then I just got a couple in and I have to say, they're pretty impressive and cool. And I really like the design. So a lot of these have applications, again, for cybersecurity, like imagine like a Bluetooth USB rubber ducky that also does Wi-Fi stuff or uh, there's lots of different possibilities you can do here when you have full access to a speedy little microcontroller that has Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and um, built-in USB. So all these things seem really cool. Uh, it currently supports CircuitPython, MicroPython, Arduino. It's it's really awesome. So I'm going to be playing with this a little bit more. It is really super brand new. Um, it's only pretty recently that you can even get these. So uh, we've been messing around with the ESP32 S2, and we've really liked it. So we're excited to try this out too and see what other possibilities it brings. Um, very, very cool and interesting. One thing I can think of um, that's missing from the current platform, Bluetooth would be useful for being able to do stuff like geofencing. Um, there's already existing payloads for that on the Bash Bunny, which I thought was really interesting. Of course, there's the possibility to do Wi-Fi geofencing, so you can detect a device by its MAC address or something like that. But if a device has MAC randomization, that wouldn't be as effective, I would suppose. But Which is super common. Yeah. Um, I don't think Bluetooth devices really do that. They so. can, but for whatever reason, they do not. Mm. So your headphones, police's like body cameras, like all those different things have Bluetooth, but they don't randomize it. So that means you can either kind of go war driving for people's devices, like car stereos, like oh, yeah. Bluetooth car stereos. They don't change their Mac address very often or if ever. So there's actually a lot of, of interesting stuff you can do with Bluetooth sniffing and identifying and geofencing, like you said by that. Yeah. Yeah, so essentially you can trigger payloads based off the presence or the lack of person around. 
Oh yeah, like make a payload only run when someone's headphones go away. Yeah. So they so don't like see it on the their computer. Room. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's super cool. So we'll be telling you more about this as we learn more about it, but it was just really cool uh, to see information about it. And so yeah, I picked one up. Um, I, I found them pretty easy to work with so far and I'm, uh, I'm very interested in learning more about them. So. All right, so that's all the time we have for today. Thank you to everybody who's in the chat asking questions and commenting on the stories. And if you have any questions about anything that we've covered or if you're watching on repeat, you can always leave a comment and we will make sure to answer it on our live Q&A streams, which we do every Wednesday now. So on our last Q&A stream, we had Darren Kitchen on as well um, as Mike, who does uh, Kismet, as well as some of the new improvements on um, the Wi-Fi pineapple that we got to discuss. Yeah. And that was super cool. So you can check out our live stream on Wednesday if you want to uh, see us on Hack 5, maybe have a special guest on and ask questions and get them answered in real time. So big shout out, of course, to Veronis for letting us to continue to do this stream, which is really fun. And also shout out to everybody in the chat for uh, just being here with us and getting to check in with us at the end of the week. Lots of fun to talk to all of you. And uh, yeah, Alex, thanks for uh, being here. Of course. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll see you all next week. Have a good one.